Okay. Um, well, I almost didn't make an episode this week because uh, I wanted to do an overview of the moment anamorphic lens that I've been using lately. Um, but I didn't sort everything out. So look for that next week or the week after that. Uh, instead, for uh, today, I'll show you the Pentax Spotmatic SL. Um, if you're shopping for a 35mm SLR that's uh, stylish and really well made, one of the Spotmatics has to be on your shortlist because they're so beautiful and they're not that expensive either. So, first off, uh, the size and weight. Uh, size is pretty average and the weight's a little bit less than the Canon UF one I showed you last week. It's a little nicer to carry around with you. Uh, there's no grip, uh, so you don't really hold it like that. Uh, instead, you like press your fingers up against the body and it works out pretty well. Um, the viewfinder is about the same size, I think, uh, but the brightness isn't quite as good. Um, if I compare them side by side, I think it's um, the Spotmatic is like two thirds of a stop darker, I would say. So you can notice it mostly in the shadows, but it doesn't really make it harder to focus. Uh, it has a microprism spot in the middle, and that makes it pretty clear when things are in focus or not. So, uh, I don't really think it makes that much of a difference, even though they're like uh, 15 or, I don't know, 15, 20 years uh, different in, in age. Um, so, anyhow, um, the shutter is really nice. Listen. like one of the most satisfying shutter sounds I've ever uh, I've ever heard. So uh, if you like a nice shutter sound and a smooth film advanced lever, I would definitely recommend this Spotmatic. And look at how beautifully contoured the film advanced lever. That's the best film, that's the best design for a film advanced lever that I've ever seen too. So it really takes a lot of the boxes for a nice camera. Um, after that, the shutter speed dial um, on the SL, uh, it doesn't have the pull-up uh, knob because it doesn't ha have a meter. So it's all one piece like a Leica and uh, there's no wiggling or anything. And the, the tents are crisp and firm, so it's pretty nice. Um, after that, here's the film reminder dial. Uh, it's easier to change this uh, if you pull up on the uh, rewind knob. And there are two sets of numbers. Uh, the first one is red, and it goes from, let's see, it goes from 20 to 25 to 32, 64, 80, 100, 160, 200. And 400. And then it has a set of white numbers for black and white. It goes from 32, 64, 100, 160, 200, 400, 800, 1600, and 3200. Um, it's a little outdated because they had different speeds uh, film available back in the mid 60s um, but I, you know it's still it's still okay um, you might get a little confused if you need to use one of the faster color films these days but you can just switch over to the white numbers and you'll be fine um, uh, after that uh, there's the uh, self timer uh, pull it back and then I'll show you how long it takes it takes a while so here we go.
took forever. <laughs> okay. Uh, what else? Uh, pull up on that free wide knob. Show the inside. The door is a little bit thinner than like the cannon, I think. Sort of razzle around a bit. But whatever. And it has a little switch on the bottom for releasing the rewind. And then you can wind up your film again. And on the lens, um, the Takamars are probably the best made SLR lenses. Um, they're really, really heavy and uh, precise and everything. Um, focusing ring is, you know, when people say buttery smooth, they're talking about the Takamars. The Takamars are buttery smooth. And then, and then, did you hear that? When you get to the end of the travel, it has just this really nice clink. Um, if you do that with the cannon, it just it sounds hollow. It just sort of has a thwacky sound. It's just not as heavily made. Um, the, uh, the aperture ring is... Um, the detents are so clean. There's like no wiggling like there is on the cannon. You can just hear the difference and feel it. So, as far as the build quality of the lenses go, these are heads and shoulders above anything else you can find. Um, here is the aperture preview lever. Really firm and solid. Um, everything about this lens is just like the best available. Um, there's nothing better made out there. Nothing. <laughs> um, so what else is there? Is there anything that I'm leaving out? I don't think so. Um, uh, well basically um, the Spotmatics, I would say they're like, maybe they're not quite as practical as a newer camera. Um, you won't get aperture uh, priority exposure unless you, until you get to the uh, Electro Spotmatics, which aren't quite as nicely made, I think. And you don't get um, open aperture metering until you get to the Spotmatic F. For, uh, for that, you need the super multi-coated tachymars. Um, if you have a super tachymar on a Spotmatic F, you won't get open aperture metering. Um, all, the, all the earlier ones have stop-down metering. Um, but, you know, if you want a, a really nice camera for um, the weekend or, you know, just, just something to have fun with, uh, I, I really recommend the Spotmatics because they're just so nice to use. Um, they're like the nice leather shoes of cameras. And uh, they're not expensive either. I, I said um, they're about uh, $100 for one in good, good condition. Um, this one has bright marks all over it, but no dings or anything. And the lenses are, well, just because they are so well made, the prices have gone up. Uh, because people want to use them on uh, digital cameras. But, you know, they're just so nice. They're definitely worth the price. Um, uh, so, anyhow, uh, I guess that's it for this week. Um, uh, let me know what you think in the comments. And um, thanks for watching, and uh, have a good week. Bye.